Hello, it's Jane here. I'm back again at the kitchen table on what can only be described as a gloomy, dank, damp January afternoon. Um, yeah, but however much I really don't want to be going out and digging the soil and getting all muddy and cold, I do want to be planning um, my plot for this year. So today's video is going to be all about how I do my planning. Now, I know a lot of you wonderfully organised souls got your planning done before the um, 2021 had even started and have got your seeds ordered, all ready to go. Um, I'm not someone like that. I am someone who basically will start thinking about the plot um, for this year Mm, round about November, December time, and then start drawing things on backs of envelopes. I mean, you can see, let's see what's on this side. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, some herbs that I want, some herbs I've already got. I mean, this is literally things I had to hand in my bag while I was waiting for someone. <laughs> supermarket car park but so basically yeah so the ideas are starting to come thick and fast around about <clears throat> November December time and then that sort of builds up to you know scribbling it all down in a notebook but what I want to do today is start to organize those ideas properly on a scarily blank piece of paper now this is by no means a tutorial, <laughs> you should know me by now, as to how to plan your allotment. This is very much how I do mine. There are many other ways you can plan. Um, there's some brilliant garden planner tools online. Um, I know some people who are whiz with Microsoft Excel, excuse the plug there, it wasn't meant to be, um, and can do brilliant spreadsheets. <coughs> Some of you don't even need to write it down. They can just look at the plot and remember what was there in previous years and plant up accordingly. I'm not one of those people. As, as you probably know by now, my memory is shocking. Let's just think of the labels. Every year, forgetting the labels, forgetting the plants. I mean, you don't see this, but so often I'm wandering through the allotment and having to call for Mike to tell me what's been in a certain bed because I just can't remember. So for me, this blank piece of paper will come in very handy, although it will change time and time again. Once it's planned out on there, at least I've got the basic skeleton of where things should be able to start going. Fingers crossed. The other reason I like to have it sort of written down, I mean, this is a bit big, this bit of paper, I'll probably lose it, mind you, um, is to look back on. So I can look back, and again, you can do this if you've done your plan online or anything, but to look back on certain years, let's have a look. Okay, I mean, this again, scribbles, little scribbles. They start life off like that. I mean, how scribbly is that? And then, yeah, we've got a very odd shaped plot. Well, just a very long, narrow plot. So you can't even go across the whole page. But yeah, it, you know, that tells me what we had in our new plot when we moved in. And then also, if you look in this one, I mean, this is, what year is this? This is 2019. That's what the basic plan looked like then. But then what happens, oh, that's just flown off. Then what happens is Mike also does a plan, which might not really correspond with mine. So that's where, um, that's where the excitement arises because we have two, although the plans are supposed to be the same, we tend to do two separate ones and then we have to get them together and try and make good. So yeah, but also, yeah, I've got plans from um, our old allotment so I can see what we grew there. And it's interesting actually, because I've got plans going back to like 2015, 2016, and I can see that I'm growing stuff then that I haven't even dreamt of growing since. So for example, I can't even think of any. What might I have grown? 
Oh, I can't even think of any, but it just goes to show they were our very early days um, of allotmenteering where we just wanted to grow anything and everything. We were just so excited to have a growing space that we did grow all sorts of stuff. Whereas now, um, and I think this comes to all of us after a while, you start to refine your tastes a little bit and you know what works and what doesn't work. Yes, it's great to do new things and try new things, but you know, you can start to look at um, what you're actually going to use, you know, the chickpeas. Let's not mention them. Okay, so, okay, so today in what is going to be one of my quickest ever videos, I've said that before, I want to show you how I do my planning, my very basic skeleton planning, starting with a blank page, a pencil, a ruler, and a pot of crayons. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. Um, it has gone really dark now, so I've got a little extra light on it. So I'm hoping you're going to be able to work it out. Sadly, I don't have one of those overhead um, tripods, which would be far better to be able to show you, but we're going to have to make do with a funny angle. So yeah, just basically, um, this is the outline of what our plot will be growing this year. You can see already that the perspective is completely wrong because our paths aren't <laughs> a quarter of the size or whatever of the whole allotment and this russet tree is actually really really big but you know the thought was there so to be honest I've just spent the last hour having a great time with the little um, colouring and pencils so much as I could sit and prettify it much better much more and also if I knew this was going to be permanent, I would be rubbing the uh, pencil out and doing some beautiful calligraphic handwriting. Not that I can do it, but I could give it a good go. Um, this is it. Now, as I say, the reason I've left these in pencil 
is because aside from the permanent plantings, so things like the fruit, which actually isn't even there yet, this is all going to have to be moved, um, the apple trees, etc., the polytunnel, any of these things could be moved at a moment's notice and probably will be if we ignore the plan. The whole idea is to try and get some sort of logic to what we plant so that when it comes to harvesting things, we're, we're not left with such a glut or um, times of having nothing at all. Not that we have been really, but yeah, just to organise ourselves a little bit better. And um, yeah, so like you can see, it, it's not perfect whatsoever, but um, it'll do for now. Okay, okay, so here it is my allotment plan for 2021 and as we all know best laid plans i'm trying to think at the end of the sentence i can't remember the end of that sentence go awry can be subject to change you know what i mean it'll come to me if you know it shout it at the screen it might come through <laughs> um but it's the basic skeleton of what at the moment i think is going to go where it's not in perspective, it's not particularly pretty, it's certainly not very detailed, but it's given me an idea of where groups of things are going to go. So, what I'm going to have to make clear to Mike this year is that we have a little, we'll have to have an agreement that before anything gets planted out, we both look at the plan. Because I'm quite happy to move the plan round, but I need to know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly decide to put his potato patch I don't know where I've got me or I'm going to put my courgettes we've just got to communicate a little bit better as to what goes where so yeah we will refer to this a lot we'll probably keep it up in the shed I imagine but um but yeah th this sort of thing is what works for me it's very much as I'm actually drawing it it helps me to register it a bit clearer in my memory my very very poor memory so um Another way I've done it before, like I say, this is just giving a rough idea of what's going to go where. Another way I've done it is to use post-it notes and put the groups of vegetables on the post-it notes. So it, just legumes, uh, brassicas, whatever, and move them round. As long as you've got your basic outline of where your beds are, um, move them round until you come to something that, that suits you and suits your plot and you can work with. And then just then commit it to paper. So I'm actually really pleased with that. Um, yeah, it will change. It'll be interesting. <laughs> I'd like to come back to it at the end of the season and just see how many scribblings there have been over the top of it because it's bound to get covered in uh, corrections, different annotations, different things will get added on, missed off. The other thing is as well, of course, this isn't the actual size of our plot. <laughs> Clearly it's not. Well, A2. Um, but... It, our plot's actually a lot longer so I could do with getting another piece of paper to fold out at the top there and even a piece of paper to fold out this side because of course Mike's taken on a bit of the plot the top end of the plot next door which all I've got on here is I've got two little arrows which says potatoes cabbage and squash so they're all going off this way so I might I might not just add the bits of paper on so we've got a more accurate sort of outline of the plot but yeah how are you doing yours how are you planning your plot are you planning your plot do you just shove them in and hope for the best because to be honest that's what I do most of the time even with a plan <laughs> but uh, I'd be interested to know put let me know in the comments below it's always good to hear what other people are doing and the many, many different ways that people approach um, organising their plot at this time of year. Because it is, let's face it, and it's so gloomy now. I've got that many lights on in here. I'm sure <laughs> not a complimentary. But, you know, on these gloomy, wintry days when, you know, you just can't get up to the plot. This is the time. Make the most of it. This is a gift of time to be able to sit down and sort things out. Um, but yeah, let me know how you do yours in the comments below. Um, again, come along to the Facebook page. I've actually put a thing up today of um, an overhead shot of our plot. I really want someone to come along and do it with a drone. But we did have a drone issue 
a year or so ago. <laughs> since um, but I've got an overhead shot from from Google Maps basically which just shows the outline of our plot because quite a few people ask what size it is um, and whereas I can tell you it's roughly 30 feet wide I've got no idea how long it is it's just quite a long plot but if you go over to the Facebook page quite a few people are putting their different outlines of their plots on that's quite interesting to see because no two are the same you know we're all working on different plots different sizes different areas that we've all got different ideas and I love that I love that we can all come together and share which is what us gardeners do best I'm gonna shut up now let me know how you are hope you're all well hope you're all keeping safe and let me know what you're up to in the garden okay and hopefully next time I come back I might be up to the allotment because I do want to do a January tour I've promised myself I will do a tour every month this year whether there's anything to see or not we'll see what the weather's like okay but uh, hopefully see you again very soon bye